In this video, I'll show you how to use AirPrint with your Epson EcoTank ET4800 printer and your iPhone or your iPad. You first need to connect your printer to your Wi-Fi network, the same that your Apple device is connected to. So both needs to be on the same network. So let's start by doing this on the printer itself. Once you're over here in the menu, you're gonna use these arrows to navigate. You're gonna select Wi-Fi setup, press OK. Press OK once more, once Wi-Fi recommended is on the screen, press OK. Select Wi-Fi setup wizard, press OK. And now it will search for all the Wi-Fi networks that are around the printer. You should see yours appearing in just a few seconds in the list that will pre be presented to you. Go down and select your Wi-Fi network. This is mine. I'll press OK once I'm over it. And now it's time to type the password so the printer can connect. If you have capital letters, you need to go down below and select this option. Press OK. If you want to input numbers, uh, click again on this icon. It will show you numbers and now you'll be able to type the numbers using this number pad. Once you finish typing your password, go down and select OK and OK on the touch panel. You're going to get this message, setup complete, press OK. If not, the screen will disappear by itself. Now that your printer is connected to your Wi-Fi network, you need to open a document that you like to print on your iPhone. I went into my files and found this one. If you want to print a web page from Safari, you simply need to click this icon, the square with an arrow, then swipe down until you see print. Click on it. If you have a file that you want to print, you need to find the same icon, a square with an arrow pointing up. Click on print and you're going to have this screen. We need to first of all make sure that under printer your printer is detected and is selected. If you don't see it, click on printer and usually it will take a few seconds. The phone will scan for all the printers that are on the same Wi-Fi network. So again, make sure that your iPhone is connected to the same Wi-Fi that you have connected your printer to. If not, you won't see it over here. Select your printer. I'm going to have a blue check mark. Go back. And now it's time to modify a few settings down below. Presets, you can leave it to none. Copies, well, select the number of copies you want. So I'll just leave it one. Print in color or black and white. This is up to you. Paper size, if you're gonna print on just a regular piece of paper that is available everywhere in North America, it will be letter size. So just leave it to letter. Then you have me media quality, click here. And if you're gonna print uh, pictures or graphics with many small fine details, I highly recommend you select best. So simply drag from normal to best. A text or something that details are not very important, leave it to normal. I don't suggest you select draft anytime because the results are not good in my opinion for anything. So I'll go back. And for layout, well, most people won't need to change anything over here, but you can go so you can have how many pages per sheet. So let's say you had four different pages and you want to combine them on one single piece of paper. Well, you can do this over here. Borders, you can select if you want borders or not and flip the orientation of the page. But again, not many people will use that. All right, so when you see that every settings are fine, your printer is selected and all the settings are fine, you're gonna press print. Extend this tray. On top here, you're going to see the progress bar. It will simply tell you that it's actually printing. And here we go. We got our print. Now I showed you how to print, but how can you scan and get the results on your iPhone? Unfortunately, you cannot do it as easy as it is to print. You need to download the Epson app to have access to this feature. It only takes a few minutes, don't worry. Let me show you how. So you're gonna open the App Store on your iPhone, go into the search over here, lower right side, go over here and type Epson. Press search. 
then you need to download the Epson Smart Panel app. Click here and download this app. Open the app once it's downloaded. Press Agree. Press OK. Then here you can press on Back. Select which kind of home display you want the app to have. Honestly, the easiest one is simply select Use Tiles on the lower right side. And here we go, this is the main menu of this app. Press on the plus icon to add the printer. Press next, press allow once. Press no. Press connect to a product already on Wi-Fi. Press allow. Here select your printer ET4800 series. It will be connected, you're going to get the blue check mark, press OK. If you have a firmware update available, it will be shown here and you can press start to update your printer. I recommend it, but this is not the goal of this video, so I'll cancel this. And now how to scan. Well, this printer has two different scanners. So let me show you how to input paper in, well, both of these scanners. So the first one is a pretty basic one. If you lift this lid, this is the scan glass. Take the paper you want to scan, place it facing down with the top part of your page on the right side. Now we need to align the corner that is right over here with the corner with an arrow of the scanner. So simply drag the paper until both the corner of the paper and the corner of the printer are touching. Close the scan lid. On the app itself, you're going to press on the green scan button. Over here, document source, you can leave it to auto detect. It will detect if you have put paper over here or on the automatic document feeder that I'll show you in just a few seconds how to use it. Make sure that these settings are okay with you. So what type of page of document you have input? Do you want to scan in color or black and white? The resolution, leave it to 200 dpi for anything that is, uh, let's say, text with some small graphics. But if you're scanning a picture or a document with fine details, press here and select the highest number, which is 600 dpi. It will take more time to scan, but it will give you very fine details that uh, are sometimes very, sometimes important if you're scanning a painting or a picture, stuff of this nature. I'll leave it to 200 dpi. Otherwise, don't touch the other settings. I didn't have much success with them, to be honest. But over here, you can remove the background. Then image format. If you're scanning some text, leave it to PDF. This is what most people are using. If you're scanning a picture or artwork, select JPEG. So I'll leave it PDF and press the start button to start scanning. It will take a few seconds. If you have selected 200 dpi, at around 30 seconds it should be on your screen. If you have selected 600 dpi, it will take even triple the time. Here you go. The scan is done and you'll get a preview on your screen. You can zoom in, zoom out, and make sure that all the details that you want have been captured. You can delete the scan by pressing the garbage bin over here if you're not happy with the results. You can resize it by cropping, pressing the second button over here. You can rotate your scan with this icon, then press next. Give this file a new name if you're not happy with the default name you're seeing right over here. Press save. And you'll be able to save it on your iPhone. If we go back, if you and press this button, the square with an arrow pointing up, you'll be able to share it on social media or send it via email to somebody in your contact list. Now let me show you how to use the top document feeder. This is great if you have a document with multiple pages, let's say 15 pages, and you don't want to put them one by one here and scan them manually. This will be able to take them automatically without you touching anything. For this demonstration, we want to make it short and sweet, so I'll just use two pages, but as I said, you can put a lot more over here. And then you're going to insert them facing up this time with the top of your page towards the left side. 
Make sure you don't have any staples. So simply glide it like that. On the app, simply press scan. And then document source, it should detect that you have input some paper on the top. If uh, it doesn't work properly, you can select manually ADF, automatic document feeder. And again, check these settings, press start and take a look. Don't touch anything, everything will get scanned. And if you have selected PDF on your phone, it will combine everything in one single document. It's not able to scan on both sides of the paper. This is something that you need to keep in mind. All right, we got our results. You're gonna see your pages down below and you'll be able to uh, see them by clicking them and going through them. Again, everything on the right side, you can delete a page, crop them, rotate them. Press next, give a new name, press save or press this button to share it on social media or emails. So this is about it. This is how you use this Epson printer with your iPhone. If you want to support my channel, please check the Amazon affiliate links down below. Every time you purchase some ink for your printer, paper, or even a brand new unit, you support my channel since I get a very small commission from Amazon. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.